Thanks for joining us for the primary candidate form for those candidates seeking Maine's second congressional district seat. My name is Carol Conley. I'm the executive director of the Christian Civic League, our 501c4, and the Christian Education League, our 501c3. We've been around since 1897, executing the mission of bringing a biblical perspective to public policy. The League's vision for Maine is to see us become a state where God is honored, religious freedom flourishes, families thrive, and life is cherished. You know, I'm very thankful all three of the candidates seeking the CD2 seat are committed to that vision. How blessed we are to have three candidates who, if elected, will defend life, religious freedom, and parental rights. There have been a lot of ads, literature, and other activities in this campaign thus far. Our goal through this forum is to let Maine's pro-life, pro-family citizens get to know these candidates so each of us can make an informed and prayerful decision on July 14th. Each of our candidates have been given these questions ahead of time. For fairness sake, we're going to adhere to a strict time frame for each question. I'll hold up the yellow piece of paper to let the candidates know they have 30 seconds to finish the question. I will briefly introduce each of the candidates, then let the league's policy director, Mike McClellan, will, he'll ask the very first question. Dale Crafts served four terms in the Maine's House representing his hometown of Lisbon Falls. And during his time in that legislature, Dale was a reliable advocate for biblical values and conservative ideals. He also was a leader of the Legislative Prayer Caucus. Dale, welcome and thank you for participating in this forum. Yeah, good morning, Carol and Mike. Thank you so much that uh, I can be part of this. I really appreciate your work and all you do. And, uh, and you know, I'm a, a supporter and I pray daily for your organization and for you and both your families and uh, right. re pre really appreciate this time. Okay, Mike, first question. Yep. All right, Dale, question one. Tell us who you are and why you want to serve in District 2. And also, if you could tell us what role your personal faith plays in your service. Well, I am Dale Crafts. I live in Lisbon Falls my whole life. I'm um, a businessman. I uh, come from a business family. I'm fortunate to have uh, six children and uh, 14 grandchildren, which is the thing that I'm most proud of. And there's a little more story to that. We're going into that now. And uh, oh, I've uh, been a public servant. Uh, I served uh, way back. I told him I was with Governor LePage when he was out helping the campaign. I told him, I said, you know, I want a landslide. And he chuckled, what was that? I said, well, I was at the town meeting floor and they, somebody uh, nominated me to be on the budget advisory committee and nobody wanted it. And I got a unanimous vote. You get a chuckle out of that. So that's where I started my public service um, in, in politics. And then went on to get elected to uh, the uh, Lisbon Town Council, served there a uh, three-year term, and then went on to get elected. And as Carol mentioned, in 2008, served four terms in the legislature and had the uh, privilege of, uh, for six years, um, co-chair in the Legislative Prayer Caucus with Senator David Burns, which was... Uh, a highlight of serving up there and Mike you know you you know he was part of that because Carol he was there every weekend and what a time we had so the importance of praying so that was really a important part praying and nonpartisan. you know we tried to do it in a way that uh, we just wanted to bring people in from both sides and to uh, pray over what we did as a servant uh, to the main people and so I really believe that is um, you know we shouldn't be called politicians I wish the word would be more a servant, you know, being a Christian and growing up in church and learning the word of God, you know, we're taught that. And uh, so I, I, uh, I like this verse, uh, Samuel 12, 24, only fear the Lord and serve him in truth with all your heart, but consider how great things he hath done for you. And uh, so that's why I want to serve. Amen. Well, Dale, we appreciate that. We appreciate your testimony when your time were up there. Dale, you know that one of the issues that greatly concerns the league is abortion rights and the desire of some, especially to fund abortion through public monies. What could the folks of the Congressional 2nd District expect of you regarding the life issue? Well, I am 100% pro-life. I've um, been an advocate for it. As, you know, I served in the legislature in Caroline. I'm sure you guys both remember the LD 1457, which is an act of strength and consent, friendly consent. You know, that was... Uh, I did gave a, I gave a passionate uh, plea on the floor. Um, all I could think about is my own 
my own daughters. And, uh, and uh, I just could never imagine that somebody would, a child could go and get an abortion without even their parents knowing it. And, uh, and that was, that was very disturbing and is. And so, you know, I am, uh, I believe in uh, life at conception. Um, I, I scripturally, as we know, Jeremiah 1, 5 tells us in uh, Psalms 139. And, uh, and I support the heartbeat bill as we see passing around the country. I think it uh, is a good place uh, for a lot of these states to be able to prove that life, you know, it's really simple to me. You know, if a heart's beating, it has to be life. So, you know, I don't know who can argue that. Now, people might want to argue at conception, but how can you argue when you can have a heartbeat in, in as little as uh, 20 days of conception? So I am a strong pro-life person and will always uh, uh, do that. I always will always vote against any public financing of Planned Parenthood. Uh, people that are believers shouldn't have their money uh, going towards abortion when they don't, when they think it's a uh, taking of life. So we've seen nationally private businesses, schools, individuals of faith being accused of discrimination for refusing to participate in the redefinition of marriage and gender. How would you approach legislation like the Fairness Act and other forces eroding our First Amendment rights? Well, you know, uh, gender identity should never be a special uh, protected category on the law. We were protected by the Constitution already. The Constitution makes it very clear. Um, and also the Federal uh, Civil Rights Act back in 1964, for example, bias discrimination based on race, color, national origin, and sex, and religion. And I always wonder, I mean, how many categories of special rights are we going to have? And what's the next one? You know, uh, if we're all covered under the Constitution, uh, I don't think that we should be passing special right legislation. Uh, I think that the, if we would just adhere to the uh, Constitution, uh, which I'm very concerned about, as you see in this nation, all the stuff that's going on, people are not even, even when you, your, your Supreme Court justices are voting against the Constitution, as we saw recently with uh, the right to open up church. Uh, that's very disturbing. So uh, I think the Constitution takes care of that, and that I was, I would not vote for any, uh, the, the Fairness Act um, at all. Dale, you know, I know you and Adrian uh, and Eric have been on the campaign trail and you guys know each other. Uh, you know each yeah. other well, you've served together. Uh, and we have said all along, we've got three candidates that are solid or vying for this seat. And the Christian Civic League will enthusiastically endorse whoever emerges from this primary. And I know you've said that you guys would support each other. What differentiates you from other candidates? In other words, take a few minutes, just why should someone vote for Dale Crafts? Well, I'll tell you, I have a lot of life experience, um, a lot, in, in a lot of different areas. I always like that when I'm out here with Governor, uh, former Governor Paul LePage, he makes it really simple. And he just says, people ask him all the time, well, why are you supporting Dale? He makes it simple. Life experience, legislative experience, and business experience. And um, so that's, that's really, you know, um, the biggest part of it. I mean, I have run businesses all my life. I've, I've uh, been served in a legislature for four terms, as we we talked about earlier. Um, I served as the assistant pastor to my church for years. I did hospital visitation as as a as a you know a counselor in hospitals and praying with people. I taught Sunday school for 15 years. I've, I've built houses, I've run heavy equipment, you know. And I'll tell you. The business, the one thing that you uh, learn uh, uh, a lot about life is having six children. As we know, we have children, right? We know that, uh, that that'll teach you a lot of things. So I really have a tremendous amount of experience that my opponents, and, and not to be critical of them, they're both my friends. You know, Eric served two terms. I've served four. He has no business experience. I'm the only business person in the race. Not that it has to be always a business person, and I don't mean that, but uh, there's just a lot of experience there. The other part that with Eric, he's more of a libertarian. I've been a lifelong Republican. When I registered in high school to vote, I registered as a Republican. My opponents have not been lifelong Republicans. And the other thing that with Eric, and not be critical because this is his choice, but he's more of a libertarian. And the thing that um, really differs us is his foreign policy. Eric believes, and we had this conversation, a lengthy conversation when he was running for the Senate, 
He believes that every military base outside the U.S. borders should be closed down. And uh, I debated him uh, on this, and uh, he didn't deny it. And the thing with that is, if that would happen, I believe the world economy would collapse if America brought all its troops home. Russia and China, ISIS and Al Qaeda would raise their ugly head, and I'm afraid that Israel would be wiped off the face of the earth. So that is a big issue, a big one difference between Eric and I. Well, that ends our questions. We want to thank the candidates for being willing to come together with us today to participate in this discussion. We'll be asking the same identical questions to each of the three candidates in the main Congressional District 2 race, which will actually conclude with the primary election on July 14th, 2020. Christian Civic League also is looking to the national election, which is set for November 3rd, 2020. Uh, we again will be putting together voter guide materials that will help you, the public, know all about candidates in Maine and nationally, as well as then for you to go participate by casting your vote. Materials will be created that will give you answers from the candidates, uh, both in printed form and on our website. To support CCL Maine efforts or for ideas on how you can be involved in this election cycle, you can contact me, Mike McClellan, at 207-329-6148, or you can simply email me at policy at cclmaine.org. Now, we encourage you all to check out and return as often as possible to the Christian Civic League of Maine website at cclmaine.org. We also obviously ask you to get out and vote. God bless everybody. <laughs>